we have the joy of the Reverend Jackie Hawkins this morning. She says, living your life's blessing. And I would add that she offered us this little paragraph, living is a dynamic process. It's not static or linear. There's sometimes curves in life's road that require us to slow down and make the necessary adjustments to our speed and steering. There are often bridges to cross that may not seem safe. Yet, as spiritual beings in this dynamic human process, we're equipped to stay the course, navigate the road, and enjoy the blessings as they come. But it takes awareness. So you can see her, uh, a part of her illustrious career right here, finished in 2013. So we're 11 years into her ministry, uh, senior minister at Heartland in Olathe. And then more recently, serving a three-year term, leadership and recruitment, le recruitment and development, sorry, at Unity. And so, uh, Jackie, your turn, but uh, we'll have a song. <clears throat> Thank you. That was beautiful. And I am so grateful to be with all of you once again. It's been a while and I have missed you and hopefully you have um, missed me a little bit. <laughs> so let's move on with, um, with our lesson today. Living your life blessings. You know, each day as we live our life blessings, our countless blessings in life, we prosper. And it takes awareness of our blessings, awareness of our environment, noticing the beauty in all things, seeing, feeling, and touching the familiar and the unfamiliar appreciating yourself and others who may or may not look like you, who may or may not think like you, talk like you. It still takes awareness because life is multidimensional. It's dynamic. And when we live, we open ourselves to receive. And the same is true for giving. When we give of ourselves, our time, our talent, our treasure, we open up ourselves to receive the blessings of life. Because living true living, it's not static, it's not linear. There is a flow to living. There is a natural flow to our prosperity. And if we experience a temporary block, as we will throughout our lives, I would say that the prospering waters of life always find a way to go around the block, over it, under it or through it. And when I say the prospering waters of life, I'm speaking of the divine ideas that come to us through prayer and meditation. And so let's take another moment in prayer, just a moment. So if you would close your eyes and just take a deep breath, And as we breathe deeply, moving in that sacred space, that sacred space within, we allow ourselves to lean into our divine nature. We breathe in the spirit, we release the love that's in our hearts. We come together in a time of support of one another as we go deeper to, to learn, to experience the truth of who we are as spiritual beings. 
And so as we are continuing to feel that sense of knowing, of light, of being together, we give thanks for this time. And so it is. And so we let it be. I always love to go in, into prayer to, to clear out the clutter <laughs> that's often in my mind. I don't know about yours. But prayer helps us to, to think more clearly. And so at this point, I would invite you now that we have some clarity to, to think about a time when you did not feel as though you were in your life's flow. You felt that you were experiencing some kind of distress, some kind of, of block. It may have been a, a recent time. It may have been a time long ago. It could have been Perhaps you had lost your job, a job that you truly loved and that you had planned to be there for many, many years. Perhaps a relationship that you truly were into was all of a sudden ended. Maybe your car broke down. Certainly happened to me. Or perhaps you have been recently diagnosed with a, a chronic illness, whatever the situation, at those times, it is important that we lean into, lean into spirit, take a moment to collect ourselves to pray. Because we, we want to feel as though we can get back into the flow. Get back in, into the flow and to be centered. To be centered in God. Again, I know I've been there. And at those times, I truly felt some despair and I needed to move into at least a moment in prayer. I'd like to share with you a story that will uh, serve as an example of what I'm talking about this morning, about living your life blessings regardless of the situation. And the story I'd like to share with you is the story of Joseph. Remember the story of Joseph and the book of Genesis? Well, that story was also made into a hit Broadway musical. Joseph and the tech, amazing Technicolor dream coat. Uh, it's been some 50 years now. Yep, 50 years <laughs> since that, um, that musical was on Broadway. But in the story, Joseph was the favorite son of his father, Jacob. And he was one of among many brothers. He was the youngest. And not only was he, he favored by his father, but he had this unique gift, this unique gift of interpreting dreams. And this talent was truly a blessing, but it was not welcomed by his brothers. And the fact that Joseph was favored by their father and his dream interpretations were not welcomed by his brothers. In fact, they resented this gift that he had. This made Joseph a target. So Joseph's brother's jealousy was so profound that one day when they were out in the fields tending their sheep, 
And Joseph went out to see how they were doing because their father had sent Joseph out to check on his brothers. His brothers were plotting against Joseph, unbeknownst to Joseph. And when he got to the fields, they surrounded him and threw him into a pit. Then shortly after that, coincidentally or not so coincidentally, a caravan of merchants were passing by and the brothers hailed them down. And they said, we have something that ought to sell you for you to uh, then sell um, on your way to Egypt. And so the merchant said, okay, I'm envisioning the merchant saying, okay. And they bring out Joseph and sold Joseph to the merchants. And once the merchants got to Egypt, they sold Joseph into slavery. Well, the person who purchased Joseph was a fairly generous master as masters go. But, and, and as it uh, came about, Joseph truly was an excellent worker. He was young, he was strong, he was attentive to his duties. The master was very pleased with Joseph, so much so that he promoted Joseph to oversee his entire estate. Well, shortly after his promotion, unfortunately, the master's wife took a shine to Joseph and she tried to seduce him. And Joseph would not have any of that. So he turned her down. She continued to try to seduce Joseph. Joseph, she wanted a relationship with him. But Joseph, knowing his place, he knew it was inappropriate for him to have anything to do with his master's wife. So rather than accepting Joseph's refusal to have a relationship with her, she went to her husband and lied on Joseph saying that Joseph was trying to seduce her. The master of course was very upset and he had Joseph thrown into prison. While in prison, Joseph, again, a kind young man, made friends easily with other prisoners. And he shared his gift of dream interpretation with them. One of the prisoners was released and he happened to um, become, um, uh, become a staff member of the king. And when the king had trouble with, the, um, with his dreams being interpreted, this, st this staff member, friend of Joseph's, said he, the king, should summon Joseph because Joseph truly understood how to interpret dreams. The king summoned Joseph, Joseph interpreted the dreams and the, the dreams suggested that, that there would be seven years of plenty, seven years of famine throughout the land. And Joseph recommended to the king that he have people to gather the grain and store the grain so that when the famine came, Egypt would be prepared. The king put Joseph in charge of this project. And, and in fact, the project was so successful that the king appointed Joseph to be viceroy, who was, and that meant that Joseph was, had the authority second only to the king in that, in Egypt. Time went on. The famine came, Egypt was protected, 
But Joseph's brothers who lived in Canaan, along with many others, were not protected. And they needed to come to the king to beg for grain so that they wouldn't starve. Joseph was the one that they had to come to, but they did not recognize Joseph. It had been many years. And so, but Joseph recognized them, but he held no ill feelings toward his brothers, nor did he hold any ill feelings toward anyone else who harmed him, who did him wrong. The story, there's many more detail to that story, but this story is an amazing account of how one can live their life blessings despite the blocks along their journey. Joseph focused on living and giving to others despite being sold into slavery, thrown into prison, and enduring other countless blocks. He focused on his blessings and his blessings multiplied. He gained great responsibility, leadership authority, financial wealth, and finally the blessings of his own loving family. Each of us is on our own journey. And so how do we live our life bless blessings even through the blocks? How do we navigate our lives? Are you allowing the blocks in your life flow to prevent you from being aware of your blessings? Do you perceive mistakes as permanent blocks to your blessings rather than growth opportunities? I read an article recently that said, and I quote, a simple shift in attitude can help us recognize and unearth the hidden potential for personal and outer world fulfillment in every event, every relationship, every duty, and every setback. Each of us can use every setback as a stepping stone to our blessings. And better yet, we can see the setback as the blessing. It's often our attitude, our awareness, our consciousness that makes the difference. As I said to some of you before we began this morning, Last year, I had a health setback, but I did not allow that setback to prevent me from doing the things that I truly wanted to do. There were some limitations, but I was able to carry them out. And one of those opportunities for living a life of blessings came when my granddaughter wanted me to officiate her wedding in New York City in Central Park. My oncologist indicated to me that it would not be wise for me to fly to New York from San Diego because I was in such a weakened state at that particular time that I would be susceptible to infection. And so when I told my granddaughter, she said to me, Grandma, if you can't fly to us, we will fly to you. And they did. Jasmine, my granddaughter, and Jack, her fiance, flew out to San Diego. And I officiated their wedding on the beach 
on Coronado Island at the Hotel Dell. It was a beautiful wedding on the beach overlooking the Pacific Ocean. And unbeknownst to me, Jasmine said, Grandma, when I was a little girl, I dreamed of having my fantasy wedding on the beach at the Hotel Dell. Talking about setbacks, turning into a blessing, a dream, a dream that came true. And so I ask you today again, are you aware that what appears to be a setback may be the blessing that you have been dreaming of? Are you seeing the setback? as a stepping stone to your blessings, a simple shift in attitude, a simple shift in awareness can help us recognize our blessings. Living from an attitude of gratitude, a consciousness of love and forgiveness, as in the story of Joseph, demonstrates where our true power and prosperity lies. It lies in our oneness with God. And so let us affirm, I am conscious of my oneness with God, the source of all my blessings. And now let us prepare for meditation. Let us take a, a deep breath, I invite you to close your eyes. And as we continue to breathe deeply, I invite you to allow these words of John O'Donohue to move through your body temple and really resonate with you. We arise today in the name of silence, womb of the word, in the name of stillness, home of belonging, in the name of the solitude of the soul and the earth. We arise today blessed by all things, wings of breath, delight of eyes, wonder of whisper, intimacy of touch eternity of soul, urgency of thought, miracle of health, embrace of God. May we live this day compassionate of heart, clear of word, gracious in awareness, courageous in thought, generous in love. And we now take these words into the silence. As we bring our awareness back into the sacred space that we have created together, we know that we have communed with the divine and we are indeed blessed. And so it is, and so we let it be, amen.